Hi everyone, it's Tracy from the Green County Public Library here at the Fairborn Branch. And today we're gonna to talk about researching women because finding the right woman can be hard to do. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so finding the right woman can be hard to do. So let's learn some techniques and tricks to help us figure out how to do it. So researching women prior to the 1950s can be hard. Um, most of the records and documents were written by men and for men. They didn't necessarily include women because women couldn't own property. They weren't allowed to. It had to be in a father's name or a husband's name. There's also the history of paternal naming here in the United States, where the father's name was taken on by the children and not the mother's name. It can also make things difficult. <clears throat> Women typically had undocumented work where they wouldn't necessarily have been on any work registers or work rules because they were staying at home, taking care of the kids. They were teaching. They were in child care. Uh, they were servants. They were maids. This was often not reported. And for a period of time, women weren't seen as necessarily a person during history. They were referred to as the daughter of or the wife of and they were expected to have an identity within that family versus an identity of their own. Um, for a long time, they weren't allowed to vote or own property. This makes it difficult to track them when there's no written record of them. And up until here recently, it was considered the proper way to address a married woman as Mrs. Leon Munger, since her husband's name was Leon, instead of addressing her as Mrs. Elizabeth Munger. <laughs> So you have to start your search like you normally would be doing, looking for the common stuff, birth, marriage, death, divorce, obituaries, land records, all of that kind of stuff, and including her maiden and married names. If you don't know her maiden name, we'll work on that. But in addition to your basic search, you need to look at the rest of the family and her friends for more information. You might be surprised that you find a maiden name on a child's marriage certificate or listed in a grandkid's obituary. Um, relatives, neighbors, um, people as witnesses on certificates could all be family, friends, cousins, nieces, aunts, any of those types of relations. So it's important to check all of those. Look at where she went, lived. Look at the events that were happening before and after, like the Great Flood of Dayton. Um, is there a written record of what happened to her house or her family? Is there something, a statement she gave that has been recorded and handed down or recorded and preserved through a library or a university? And look at what was going on during the time period, um, nationally and internationally, wars, collapses, famines, all of those things can affect what kind of records and where you would look for those records. <clears throat> so things you need to look for. You need to look for applications, birth certificates, legal documents, wills, estate settlements, land records and deeds for her and her husband, land transfers, her, her husband, her parents, and military records for her, her husband, her siblings, her parents, her children. Any of these records can have a little bit of information that can lead you to a lot. So be sure to check all of those out in detail because you never know what you might find. Uh, so lots of things you may want to search for. Starting in your house, you may want to look for recipes, letters. These are great correspondences within families and friends to tell what's going on, give you the gossip, and other some information that you may not have realized. And journals and diaries are great if you can find them. And even if you can't find journals and diaries from your specific grandparents, you may be able to find them from people in the area and get an idea of what was going on in the community. Textiles work, such as quilts, wall hangings, hankies, clothes. All of these can have initials or dates, or you can track down the time period that they were made in and give you an idea of when you're looking. Family heirlooms that have been passed down, china, silverware, trinkets, can all give you an idea of when people were married, when people moved, when people were living in certain areas. If you have furniture that's been passed down and it's made by one specific furniture maker in Boston in the 1800s, you have an idea that your family was probably in Boston in the 1800s. Funeral cards, wedding announcements, programs, 
newspaper clippings are wonderful things when you're researching women. You would be surprised at how many you can find, especially with databases like we have on our website. And just doing a simple name search with some of these, you can find so much information. I found one of my grandmothers where she went and visited her in-laws that I didn't know she had because she had a previous marriage. Amazing what you can find out with a little research. Remember your five W's of research. Who are you looking for? And who did they interact with that may have created records? Did they know somebody who was a little shady? So they may have a criminal record and they may be mentioned in some police reports. Did they know someone who they stood in as a godparent for and they had many children? What do you want to know? Be as specific as you possibly can. Just saying, I want to research my family is great. I want to research my grandma. Wonderful. You need to be a little more specific. What do you want to know about your grandma? Do you want to know when she was born? Do you want to know what her maiden name is? Do you want to know who her parents were? This gets you an idea of what kind of documents you need to look for and where you need to look. Where? Where are all the places that she has lived? <clears throat> where has her family lived? Her husband, her parents, her grandparents. Where have they lived? Where have they moved to? When did they move? We'll get into a timeline later that'll help with that. What time are you looking for? This gives you an idea of what kind of records you could possibly find or not find. If you're looking for birth records prior to when your state kept them, you're going to have to look for something that's not a formal birth record, such as a birth announcement, um, something written in a Bible, written in a diary, letters to and from people. And those are the kind of records you're going to need because you won't find an actual state-issued birth record. Why do you want this information? What are you looking for? Are you looking to find her parents? Do you want to find her husband? Be sure you understand why you're doing it so you know what to look for. Some of the less common records that are a little harder to find but can provide you with a lot of information are land records. Um, fathers could have transferred the land directly from them, hadn't gone to their daughter, but it went right to their husband because women couldn't own property if they had a husband. Um, they may be able to maybe identify during the sale of it because, again, women couldn't own property, but it had to be mentioned why the land was getting transferred from this person to this person. And the dates of sales may help determine death dates. If you notice this has happened, there's a good chance the father died, and that's why the land is going to the son-in-law. Check that time period for dates of people who have passed away. Tax records. If she was listed as the head of household, chances are she was in charge of herself for a while. When you keep going through the tax records for the next few years, if you notice she's no longer there listed as the head of household, that could mean she has passed away, she remarried, she moves in with a child or a sibling or other family member and is no longer the head of the household. Gives you an idea of where to look and ideas of records to look for. Probate records, wills, and guardianships are great. They have lots of information. If you can get a hold of them, they're wonderful. Check out who were the witnesses or the executors of these documents. This can give you other ideas of places to look. Um, if you notice the witness or the executor is the same person that was on the child's as a witness for the wedding and as a witness or a godparent for a child, this person was important to the family. You can look and see why, and it can lead you to other branches of your family. Military and pension records, check her service records. You might be surprised at how many women actually have these before they were allowed to be in service, in the service rather. Um, I have stumbled across nursing records from the Civil War time period where they weren't actually military records, but they were stored with stuff in researching rooms, like the Green County room. So you'd be surprised what you can find. Check out his pension, his burial, his service, his enlistment, his draft cards. All of these usually mention next of kin or person who to be notified. Many times it was a wife or a mother. And again, can give you ideas of where and when to look. Lineage, lineage and lineages, societies and applications. These are like the daughters of the American Revolution, sons of the American Revolution, etc. These are very detailed and you have to have both parents' names with maiden names, if possible, back so many generations to be considered for it. So this is a good way to check and see if your family's in it. Once you have a little research, you can 
or a little knowledge, you can go back further in your family and see if anybody has already submitted this. Churches and organizations keep records, such as churches, schools, sororities, all of these things that you may be able to find newspapers, publications, journals, membership lists for, um, and yearbooks and things like that to look for to get an idea of where this person was, when they were, and some other cool information you didn't know. Newspapers, like I said, are great. Don't just check the birth and the obituaries and things like that. Check the social and society sections. Some newspapers have gossip sections that are wonderful to check. You can find out some really juicy stuff. And you might find out that they visited people that you didn't even know were part of the family. I had a grandmother who visited another town and it said she was visiting her in-laws. Turned out she had had a, another family that we didn't know about. And check the notable events section, major stories. I know in the springtime during graduation, they always list graduates. Check that section. You may find her grandmother's maiden name or other siblings there. Look at other things that aren't considered traditional sources, recipes, textiles, heirlooms. These can give you cultural references. Um, if you have a lot of things from Italy and a lot of recipes from Italy, and then there's probably a good chance Italy is somewhere involved in your family. It gives you an idea of where to look. You can check where a lot of Italians immigrated. What times did they immigrate? It can help you narrow down some of your research. Use historical context. Um, Diaries and journals of the women of the time may give you an idea of what was going on in women's lives. Were they allowed to own property? Were they allowed to be doing things? What could they do? What kind of jobs could they hold? Local histories, um, families could be mentioned, individuals could be mentioned, or just generalizations of what was going on in their area. Naming patterns are very important. Um, not everyone stuck to them 100%. Um, Families, for whatever reason, may have chose to continue their cultural naming or may not have. Some families, a lot of families had maiden names used as a child's middle name. Uh, <clears throat> so if the min, middle name was Samson, there's a chance that mom's name could last name could have been Samson before she got married. A lot of people name their firstborn son after their paternal grandfather and their secondborn after their maternal grandfather. So you can get an idea of possible names to research based on her children's names. And you can look to when the name was Americanized, um, especially if they immigrated from another country and wanted to sound more American. Check all of those types of spellings because you never know what you may come up with. And the last bit of information that I have for you that can really help in your research is creating a timeline. This has helped me out so many times. It gives you an idea of what could be going on for your family, what kind of records to look for, and what could have caused them to move to other places. As you can see here across the top, I have my grandmother's information up until 1950, the birth of her daughters. This is her specific information up here. When she was born, birth of her siblings, when she graduated high school, death of siblings, married, death of her mother, husband's enlistment and discharge, and birth of her children. Underneath, I have national things that have happened and where I have found her. So, for example, if I wanted to find out about her family, I can see that during 1914 to 1918, World War One was going on can look and say, okay, she would have, her father probably was of age to be serving. Is there any record of him? Does she have any older siblings? Does she have any, anybody like that who would have been mentioned in war records? A Spanish flu was going on. If there were a lot of deaths right in this time period, I could wonder, is that what happened to him? Is there death records for that? I have her census where she was and who she was with, parents, 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 sister-in-law. Um, I have letters that I found saying she was postmarked to Alabama. Oh, well, all these other ones say she lived in Ohio and all of a sudden she was in Alabama during World War II. Why was that? Was he home on leave and he just sent a letter and she went to visit? What was going on? Something else to research. 
Um, during this time, I see she was in around Clark County between her children being born. So I could check both of those to see if her daughters were born in Clark County, were they born somewhere else? Turns out this one was born in Michigan. So it looks like they moved around a lot once he got, once he was discharged, she moved from possibly Alabama to Michigan, back to Ohio. Gives you an idea of things to look at in other places to research. All of these tricks are great for using in your general research and they will definitely help you in your researching of the women in your family. So that's it, good luck and happy research.